Happy Palm Sunday to all of you. May Almighty God ride triumphantly into our lives in Jesus' name. Now, it's our turn to sing from CGS number two. CGS number two. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. While the orchestra is setting up, we want to appreciate them for the prelude we started with Enneklene String Choir, String Orchestra, beg your pardon. And then we had Ride On, Ride On, composed by H.H. H. Mealman, which was sung by the choir before this beautiful child of Jerusalem presented by the youth choir. For our Palm Sunday service, for our Solomon Okun, we come forward now to lead us in hymn number two and other pieces. We sing hymn number two, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee, Holy, Holy, merciful and mighty God in three person, blessed Trinity, we are going to sing reverently to the glory of God as the organist will give us a tune and we we'll sing together.
To God be the glory. We sing again hymn number 12. Hymn number 12. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angel proceed forth. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. We're going to sing number one, two, and three. Then we jump to sing number five and six. One, two, and three, five, and six. As we sing verse six, we all reverently stand up. After that, we shall pray. Hymn number 12. Please give us a hymn. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to rise on our feet to hail your name and to prostrate before you because you've been so good, you've been so loving, you've been so kind. 
kind and you've been so faithful. We thank you that we could be here this morning in your house. We are here with great, with high expectation because we know that this day there is going to be a shout of victory. This day the windows of heaven will be open and blessing will be poured upon us. Thank you, my Lord and my God, that even at a time like this, time that the world is running helter-skelter, time that the world is in confusion, but deep in our heart, we know that we have a big God, a God that is able and willing to do what nobody else can do, a God that is still in the business of hearing and answering prayer, a God that is still in the business of performing signs and wonders. May today be a day of miracle. May today a day of joy unspeakable. Let the heavens open. We want to hear from you. Thank you for the past blessing. Thank you for the blessings of this moment. Thank you for the blessing that you have in store for your children. Lord God of heaven, we commit you, your messenger into your hand. Speak from heaven through him. Speak with power. Speak with authority. Words of comfort. Words of assurance. Words of victory. Shake us up today. Father, shake us up today. We commit everything into your hand. We commit this country into your hand. We are looking up to you. You are the only one that understands the situation in our country. Let there be peace in this country. Let there be peace in this country. Thank you, my Lord and my God. When after you have spoken, when your children will step out here, may they meet you here. Today we want to hear of shout of victory. Victory of justification. Victory of sanctification. Victory of baptism of the Holy Ghost. Victory of healing. Victory of restoration. Lord, do it. For we ask you in Jesus' mighty name. Good morning again to everybody. Happy Palm Sunday to you. May the joy and gladness and the pomp that accompany the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem be ours today in Jesus' name. We want to extend similar greetings to our internet audience and praying with them that God will meet them at the point of their needs. We're happy to have newcomers to our church today those that are attending our service for the first time are welcome and we want to request that such should please stand up for identification. If today is your first time of attending our service in Anthony here, kindly stand to be identified. Okay? Maybe such are not uh, confident enough to stand. Well, after the service, where you must have prayed to your satisfaction, we would like to meet with you in our reception center in Kapak B. Our ushers and help desk will lead you to that venue. Our dears, Brother Isaac and his wife, are still on their annual leave, which hopefully should round up this week, and we expect them back in our midst. So let's continue to pray with them, go to strengthen them, renew their strength, and bring them back safely. Let us continue to engage God in our team prayers for this nation. Sure, God of Daniel will be our God. The God of Nehemiah. Nigeria may be passing through a traumatic situation, but we are confident, we have the faith that very soon, very soon, 
God will see us through. But we must pray. Let's be faithful to the one hour chain prayer or more. Any time during the day, midnight, dark night in the morning, daytime, God is ready to listen to us. And Tony, group two members, we met at 1 p.m. in the prayer room today. And you should please remember that they will be on duty this week. We want residents and members living around Pangroove, Unipan, Shomolu, Pedro, and Lady Lack to meet with us today after the devotional, 30 minutes after the devotional service in classroom nine, the Tabernacle Extension, for a very important meeting. Uh, let's be reminded that today, later in the evening, 5 p.m., we are going to have evening revival and evangelistic service, which will be anchored by our youth. It's, it's meant for all of us. It's a very interesting time when we see the young ones that will replace us, see them doing it right in our presence. Let's be their place. Then we did announce last Sunday the transitioning of our IYC for this year's uh, youth meeting. We did announce also that the theme of their meeting for this year, which will which we last for three days, will be Ignite Your Feet. Starting on Thursday at 8 p.m. with a film show online for everybody. It's not on site here, but it's online. Anybody can join. Details will be given for the connection, and our on, definitely be available on all our online channels. Then the worker segment will be on Friday, March 29th. March 29th. And it will be for workers in all categories. It's a compulsory meeting for all youth workers. That is, all youth 40 and below who are, who are gospel workers. And it's a whole day affair. Then the general segment will be on Saturday from 10 a.m. where all, all our youth open to those whether they are workers or not, all our youth to gather together for the program. To aid our planning, we want to request that attendees should register on the link to be displayed or with the help desk or with youth officers. And finally, on that issue, all our young people who have been saved, saved souls, 40 and below, they are needed at the central wing of this uh, uh, gallery by 12.30 today for a crucial meeting. Other services during the week will be as, will be as usual, early morning prayer meetings, then Bible study, 6 p.m. here, 6.30 in Isaac John, and six, start, 6 o'clock in Isaac John and here, and then 6.30 p.m. in Shippe Ulu Bible Study Center. Men in group two, we pray, we have their prayer retreat, 9 to 11 p.m. All other men are, called, are cordially invited. Next Sunday, being Easter Sunday, we'll have our usual Easter services, starting with Sunday school for children 8.30, adult Sunday school 9, children service 9.40, devotional service for adults 10.45. And in the evening of that Sunday, that's this next Sunday, Easter Sunday, our choir and orchestra will be on stage to, to give us the Easter concert titled Easter Tide. And this one will be at 5 p.m. You are all cordially invited. And invitation cards are already available. You can collect for your invitees at the protocol office at the basement. 
The sequence of our Sunday school for next Sunday, because of the Easter, will be adjusted as follows. Elementary, we have lesson 120, book 3, the brightest day in all the world. Then adult, we have lesson 435, taken from book 33, the resurrection and ascension of Christ. Wedding announcements. In accordance with the Marriage Act, Marriage Act of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we make this announcement. Sister Anolu Apo Timitope Odumusi and Brother Moses Mobuluaji Itonola of Anthony Gufo in Weka headquarters have agreed to be joined together in holy matrimony in this church. This is the first announcement. Should any person or group of people have any reason why this should not, should not be joined, they should make their grounds of objection known to the ministry immediately. Just as I'm leaving here, we shall listen to the anthem titled Hosanna, composed by Isabella G. Parker. Then we have the scripture reading taken from Romans 12, 1 and 2, before the special song, I will be a friend to Jesus. Quartet. God bless you today.
not not leave build all the days glory when all the hurts close the dust story now does the song beam bright once more while all the world dots in wonder For this special Lord's Day service, our scripture reading is taken from the Epistle of Paul, the Apostle to the Romans. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech thee, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, too. And be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. They tried my Lord, my Lord and Master with no one to, with no one to defend. Within the hall, within the hall of, of pilots, he stood with us. He stood with us, our friend. Our world may turn, our world may turn against him. I love him too. I love you too. My Lord shall have, My Lord have a friend I'll be a friend, be a friend to, to Jesus. Jesus My life for him, 
the scripture of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, we consider 27 and 28. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping things that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God bless them. Amen. Let me stop there. Today being the Palm Sunday is another day of victory for the church. And we want to consider as a topic the image of God. The image of God. And that is why God is a great God. God can never regret and God will never regret and God wants to remind the church this morning 
the intention of God for me and the intention of God for you, no matter how you think, no matter how you reason, is immaterial. But what is immaterial is the message of God, the intention of God for you and for me. And that intention is this we read in Genesis chapter 1. He said, and God said. And God said. It wasn't a man that said it. It wasn't the pastor that said it. It was God Almighty, the creator of the heaven and the earth. The God that no man is equal to. The God that no man can query his authority. And God say, what did God say? Let us make man. Let us make man in our image. Let us make man after our likeness. That is the first intention of God towards humanity. God did not make man in the image of animals. God did not make man in the image of the things in the heavenly or the angels. God did not make man in any image in the water because these are inferior image. These are images that is so lower before God. And God thought about it that I want to duplicate man, a man. I want to produce somebody who will be like me. I want to see somebody who will represent me on the earth. I want to know somebody who will look like me in power and authority. And God said, this must be man. And said, let us make man in our own image. In our own image. Let us make man in our own image. And so, the only thing that makes us recognize a man is the image of God. If you don't have the image of God, you are yet to be a man. And he says, he created men and women in his own image. So we are standing in the house of God today as the image of God. We are not just people made by accident. And God said, let them have a dominion. Let them have dominion. Let them have authority. Let them have power because God is a God of dominion. God is a God of power. God is a God of authority. God is a King of kings, the Lord of lords. He ruled by his authority and power. And God says, let man have a duplicate of that power. Let man live in that power. Let women live in that power. And he says, they should have dominion. Over what? Number one, have dominion over the fish in the sea. Have dominion over the fowls of the air. Have dominion over the cattle. And have dominion over all the earth. Have dominion over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And you cannot argue this passage. You cannot interpret it more than what God has interpreted it here. Brother, that is what I am. That is what you are. May God bring us to his original image. And what am I seeing in the church today? People who feel they are downtrodden. People who feel they have no power. People who feel they are rejected. People who feel they cannot do anything good. Quite opposite from the word of God. 
And the most annoying part of it today is that the things that God said we should have dominion over are the things that are having dominion over us. May this statement from God provoke me and provoke you to turn around to know who you are, that you are to take dominion over the things that are ruling over you. Have dominion over the fish in the sea. Have dominion over the fowls of the air. Have dominion over all the things on the earth. Have dominion. Move in dominion. Move in power. We don't know a man by talking. We know a man by what he is carrying. We know a man by the image of what he is carrying in authority and power. And God says, let them have dominion. And do we have dominion? What dominion do we have today? No more dominion. Even the things that we're supposed to rule over. For example, the powers in the sea are almost killing half of humanity. The powers of the sea, instead of us having dominion over them, we allow the powers of the sea to have dominion. For That's why young boys, young girls, sitting down here, are tormented by the power of the sea, the spirit of the sea, the spirit of Mamed. The spirit of the sea is controlling, is whining, is subduing you. People sitting before here are half animals, half life. Some sitting there here, they are married to demons in the water, spiritual husband, spiritual wife, mommy water, and they rule their life. May God deliver us. Amen. Dominion over the things in the sea. Dominion over the fowls of the air. Dominion over all things. That is who I am. You cannot interpret this more than this. And that is how the heavens are looking at you. That is how the heavens are looking at you. That is how God is looking at you. But we see ourselves not having dominion. Either you like it or not. What you're supposed to have dominion over it dominates in you. Fowls of the air. Fowls in the air. The spirits in the air are dominating us. Making us slave. The spirits in the air. The spirit in the air is the spirit of witchcraft ruling over your life. The spirit of the air that you're supposed to have dominion over and put them into subjection. You allow them to rule you. The wickedness of that spirit is almost ruining eternity. And you think you are like God. You think you carry the image of God. It is of this case. God came down to see man. He honored dominion over. And when God arrived in the garden, God called man, Adam. And he said, God, I hear your voice and run away. And God reminded him with a rebuke. He said, why do you run away? He said, because I am naked. And God was angry with Adam. He said, who told you? Who told you that you are naked? I hid this from you. My glory hits you. My glory covered you. Who told you that you are wicked? Who told you that you are naked? Brother and sister, who told you that you are a failure? Who told you that you cannot succeed in life? There is a power that dominates that idea. There is a power that subdues you. And God is a big God. God cannot fail. Can you just say amen? I said God cannot fail. God is a big God. God wants the image that he has to be transferred to you so that you cannot fail. That is why Adam said, I heard your voice and I hid because I was naked. Oh, sin, sin, Trip Adam of that dominion power, and he was naked. His, his window of dominion was open. 
His window of authority was open, and all the demons that he's supposed to rule over run into his window, run into his life, possess him. Many, 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 many devils, they run because they saw a window they can run into. The spirit of suffering run into man. The spirit of sickness run into man. The spirit of rejection run into man. The spirit of sickness run into man. The spirit of poverty run into man. The spirit, the spirit, all kinds of spirit to useless you. The spirit of barrenness running. They take a very big race to shook you because your window is open. May you close that window this morning. The spirit of hatred ran into man. And that is why there is somebody in the house here. Maybe you are thinking, after this service, I will prepare that divorce suit. I must divorce that woman. I must divorce that man. What image are you carrying? What image is that? The image of hatred. It's not the image of God. May God tear that divorce notice. Say amen. May God tear that divorce Moses. May God tear that divorce Moses that is rampaging in the church. The church that's supposed to carry the image of love of God is now carrying the image of hatred. And that is why, that is why the Palm Sunday showed up. Amen. That is why the Palm Sunday showed up and God looking to man. God looking to me. Is it the man I created? No matter the title you carry that men give unto you, the heaven is not looking at that title. The heaven is looking at the clothes you are wearing. It's looking at the image. Who, whose image is he carrying? Whose image is he carrying? And God said, Jesus, men have gone astray. And Jesus came down. The real man was duplicated again. Glory to God. The real man came down again in the image of Jesus. And Jesus came as the real man and took over the image of God and carried the image of God. And he came down like God in authority, in power to overcome, to subdue all the earth. And that was why when he came, he saw the suffering one. He said, bring them to me. He cast them out. And then he saw, he saw the blind eyes. I said, you're supposed not to be blind. He cast them out. He came and they bring a woman suffering from the issue of blood. He said, okay, go free. You are free. He came doing good, wonderful thing. But for Jesus to celebrate the call of eternity, that I am the image of God, which we have lost. Jesus came back. He came back, and he's in the house today. The real man. The real man. He came back, and now he fought with the devil. I want to tell you, what did he fight for? What did he fight? Look at what he fought here. The battle that he fought here. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 28. WCS, please show us Matthew 28. Let us see the battle. How we are going to celebrate this Palm Sunday. Let us see and look at the, look at the window, and you see the battle that Jesus fought in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18. Read Matthew 28, verse 18. That is what Jesus Christ did. Which he came in power. Look at this here. 18 says, 18 says, and Jesus came, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, Josh, can you read? Can I hear you read? Open your mouth and read. Amen. That is a man. That is a man. He came and collected all the lost dominion, all the lost power. He collected it. He said, all power is given unto me again on earth, in the heaven, underneath. It's given unto me. And he gave them a commission. He said, go with this commission. Teach all nations. Teach all nations. Teach all nations. This power, 
this dominion mandate, this old nation to observe all these things that I've taught you. He said, now, behold, I am with you always. I am not going away. I'm not leaving you alone as in the garden. I will be with you. I will stand by you to make sure this dominion is fulfilled. I will stand by you. And I'm so sure Jesus is standing here. And that is why when Jesus came, he defeated the former power of the devil. He put them to shame on Calvary. And he walked into Jerusalem, oh glory to God, to sanitize the church of God. He entered the church of God and he was seeing people, bam, who could not see authority, who could not observe dominion. Jesus rescued them. And set them free and reassured the church that the image is restored to you. The image of power. Can we read Luke chapter 10? Luke chapter 10, verse 11. Luke chapter 10, verse 11. That is why we should celebrate Jesus. That is why we should sing Hosanna to him. That is why we should sing Hosanna to him. But then, uh, this thing is not compulsory. This thing is to as many as receive him. This thing is as many who want to be free from the shackle, from the power of the enemy. And Jesus came and told him in Luke chapter 10, this thing is not a hidden thing. Luke chapter 10, verse 19, that is the power he restored. That is the image he restored to the church. And he said here, Behold, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents. That's what you're supposed to take dominion over. To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and church and nothing, nothing shall by enemies hurt you the image of God you take off that image of God and you have to finish with that when you have that image you have authority with God when you have that image back it is then you can help somebody without the image of God you are a failure to your society without the image of God you are a failure in your family People are dying in the family, and you fold your hand and look. They finish number one, they finish number two, they finish number three, and you are number four, and you run to Lagos to hide. You think you can escape? You cannot escape. You better take the glory of God and stand as an intercessor in that family and say, No, I am the image of God. I have power and dominion over you. I resist you from coming in. I resist you from killing the next person. The image of God. And when Jesus gave that power to the church, he gave the church authority. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Mark. Mark. Let's go to Mark. He gave the church a wonderful authority. Mark 16. Today is the day of Jubilee. The Palm Sunday. We are not just going to dance with palm in our hand. We will carry the image of God. We will carry the authority of God. We will carry the, what we're supposed to be. In Mark 16, that is what you are. That is the man. That is the man. The people that heaven called men. The people that heaven say, these are men I created. The people that men say, these are men that I created. These are men. Men, not just Goa, men, men of God. He said, These are the men I created. Mark chapter 16. Because you must function in the power of this God. Mark chapter 16, 17. Hear this and hear it very well. Hear it and hear it very well. And uh, this sign shall follow them that uh, believe. That is the man. That is the man. That is the man in the eyes of Jesus. That is the man in the eyes of God. He said, this sign shall go with them that believe in my name, in my name, in my name, in my name, in my name. They shall cast out devils. 
In my name, they shall speak with new tongues. In my name, they shall take up serpents. And uh, they drink, if they drink anything deadly, it never hurts them. In my name, in my name, they shall lay hands upon the sick, and the sick shall be healed. We are not, it is so risky to command uh, the power of sickness, the mental health to physicians. They will fumble us. It is very dangerous for a church to so surrender the power of healing, the power of divine healing that God has given to us in original. To hand over to doctors. Doctors are good, don't misquote me. Doctors are good, but there are cases doctors cannot address. Mental disease. Have you ever seen doctor having solution to mental disease? It's spiritual. It's waiting for me and you who carry the power of God, who carry the image of God. And if you are yet to be in that realm of the spirit, you just keep quiet and ask God to empower you in his image so that you can be a help to the church of God. You can be a help to your community. You can be a help to your family. You are not a church goer. You carry the image of God to solve problems. He said, in my name. In my name. In my name. Amen. You should cast out demons. You cannot preach this place more than it is written. In my name, you will cast out demons. Amen. If you cannot cast it, not the error of this book. It is your error. That is a mandate of power. An authority that is a garment God has given to me to be of hell to those people who are in captivity from the devil I supposed to have dominion over. He said, In my name, in my name, you should lay hand upon the sick and they shall recover. Who told you that the telescope of a doctor can understand what cancer is? They can't understand. Cancer is a spirit. Cancer is a spirit. It takes a spiritual man to lay hand upon the spirit of cancer and rebuke the spirit of cancer. And of course, do you know what is happening? They will obey you. But before they obey you, they will obey you. They will look at where you come from. It is never English language. They can never obey your Queen's language. They cannot obey your selected Queen's English. The devil does not understand English. All that the devil understands is what are you wearing? What are you wearing? Which image are you wearing to lay your hand upon those that are possessed? Which image are you wearing to cast the devil? Which image are you wearing? Some of us, we still wear the image of sin and we want to cast our devil. We wear the image of fornication, the image of adultery, the image of lying, the image of hatred, the image of tribalism. And you, want, you think the devil can obey you? You think he can obey you? He will look at the garments you come from. He will look at where you come from. That is why I'm afraid of God. God is never a respecter of anybody. And that is why before any devil will listen to you, he will assess you. If, no matter the color you put in your neck, he will overlook the color, he will overlook the shirt, he will overlook the jacket, he will overlook the outward appearance. And that is why in my own division of a gospel standard, of a spiritual standard, he's a man. It's a woman who put on the image of God. Not the dress you wear, not the cap you wear, not the shoe you wear. That is immaterial before the territory of the demon. All they are looking for, by the time you approach them, they will look at you. What image is he carrying? What image is he carrying? And you carry image of hatred. You think the devil will, will bow down for you? You carry the image of tribalism. You carry the image of unforgiveness. You carry it. That is why the church fell. We carry so many images. And for us to be man, for us to be a man, we must carry the image of God. <laughs> if not so, you'll be a menace to yourself. You will just watch your people dying like chicken. You will just, you will be undertaker for them. You will bury them so quick because there is no image in you. Tears will be your passion. Sorrow will be your, because there is nobody that rise with the image of God. There is nobody in the family that rise with the image of God and say, no, enough of this death, enough of this sickness, enough of this, I take dominion over you. That is a man. And finally, before we pray, 
Because this thing is not about, it, it's just about, it's about uh, Palm Sunday. I am not celebrating Palm Sunday. It is a ritual of religion. But I am celebrating that Jesus came and died and take me back to where I can take back the image of God. That's what I celebrate. And if you want to take back that image, because that is your responsibility as a child of God. That is what you are. That is what you are. If you cannot live to that standard, we have a work to do. You can't deceive generation. You can't deceive generation. You can't deceive generation. They want to see what you are carrying. They want to see the image. People are tired of preaching. People are tired of church. People are tired of preaching. People want to see the God that you are preaching. How effective, how potent is the God you are preaching. And that will only come when you put on the image of God. And that Paul entered the church. Paul entered the church in the book of Romans before you pray. Because today is a day I want to provoke you to anger. Enough of this silence. Looking people die. Enough looking people to die. Even yourself, your, all, all, all about you is self-pity. It's self-pity. That is how I was born. No? That is why you change this language that you should be a dominion. The women, they ask you, what is wrong with you? I am asthmatic. You, you blow grammar. That thing is not asthmatic. Hey, what is wrong with you? I am a diabetic. Oh, may God visit you. Amen. You are not a diabetic. You are not asthmatic. You are not a pauper. You are the image of God. Amen. God cannot seek. God cannot die. God cannot fail. My AFF student, you have no business with failure. Can you shout a big amen? amen. You have no business with failure. When you carry the image of God, there is no allowance for failure. There is no allowance for exam maltreatment. There is no allowance you go to exam hall and you fail. You can not fail. Yeah. Because you carry the image of God. Daniel could not fail. Oh, Daniel, Meshach, Abednego, they torn the then wall of Babylon upside down. They put the image of God in the classroom. They stayed together. The Bible said, Daniel excel in science, in all the people. Then why can't you not excel? You will excel, oh. Amen. You will excel. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That book they read for us. That is where the failure point is. That is where God is begging us before we pray. Please, please. That is the begging of God. That's where God is begging. Where God is begging. He was not begging sinners. You are baking believers. Say, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This preaching is not my reasonable service. My reasonable service is to present myself a living sacrifice. This body, this body can never put on the image of God. This body cannot take the glory of God. It is this body we are fighting with. It is this body. And this body to die before you take the glory. This body must die before you take the image. If you are in this flesh, the Bible says, I beseech you, I beg you, give your body a living sacrifice. In the altar of fire. Let fire break this ego. Amen. Amen. Let fire break this ego. Let fire break this pride. Let fire break this pride that I am the local champion. I am the only good person. I am the only five person. You will never carry the power of God. Let fire break this flesh that cannot forgive. Are you not surprised? You are born again. And yet you are tormented by the spirit of unforgiveness. You are born again, is it not? I don't argue it, but uh, the glory, the glory of the garments of the kingdom is not radiating. How many of us here? You are born again, you can't forgive. You have sworn never to forgive. How many? You are many. How many? And yet you want to lay hands upon the sick over here? Which healing is that? How many? How many? 
tribalism have eaten us up. How many hatred have eaten us up? God, Paul, Paul was talking to believers here. He said, I beg you, I beseech you by the mercy of God, leave this body. Before you leave this earth today, God will break that image. That hatred, God will break it. God will break it and put you a new garment. A garment of power. And when you go home, you will see sickness in your home. You will say, I lay my hands in the name of Jesus. They will obey you. I tell you, this is the time. We have the battle for your glory. They say, come, I give unto you power to rule over the affairs of life. Don't deceive yourself. If you don't have dominion, somebody will dominate you. Something will dominate you. Sorrow will dominate you. Anger will dominate you. Hatred will dominate you. Poverty will dominate you. But Jesus has come to the house today to give you power. Are you willing to change camp? You just want to wear the garment of deceit? Are you willing to change your camp? Let us make man in our image. Whose image are you? God will interpret it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father and our God, we thank you for the word you have sent to us today. Ancients of days, Lord, we come before thee, O Lord. Please regain thy full image upon us again, O Lord. Set us free, O Lord. Bring us back to the place of dominion, O Lord. Save today, sanctify, baptize with your Holy Ghost and fire. Give us back the victory, O God. And forever we will give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray.